Welcome back to Bluegrass on this beautiful Saturday afternoon. Today, guys, I'm answering a question that I get all the time, which is, hey, Stoney, can you help me keep my dog from escaping my backyard? All right, well, the answer to that is yes, but it comes with a caveat. I'll help you keep your dog from escaping your backyard if you'll promise me to help your dog quit living a life of quiet desperation. In other words, I don't mind helping you keep your dog secure in your yard as long as you're taking your dog out and making sure that he has a stimulus-rich life, right? Okay, that's all I'm asking. Take them for a walk, let them meet the neighbors, let them meet the other dogs, let them have some good adventures, let them spend their energy, right? And that right there is gonna go a long way towards making them feel like staying in the backyard is cool because they're just staying in the backyard waiting for you to get home to take them out on a big adventure right when you leave a dog in the backyard and all there is is prison walls around then what does the dog feel like right the dog feels like it needs to escape because what do people like to do when they're in prison well they like to escape okay so make your dog's life less like it's in prison and more like it's at a resort so it's at your house hanging out soaking up the sun eating some treats just waiting for you to come home and take it uh, out for some fun times and y'all can meet in the middle right so we're gonna we're gonna talk about keeping the dog in the fence right but we're also going to talk about your responsibility to take the dog outside of the fence right now so where these problems generally manifest uh, People have two kinds of fences in their backyard usually, right? Uh, like if you live in a pretty nice neighborhood, uh, this is the kind of fence you have, like these wood plank fences, right? Uh, some people like have uh, chain link, right? I have chain link because I own a dog kennel. This is also a really good tip for all you guys that own dog kennels. Uh, but where you run into problems with dogs escaping fences is 95% at the bottom of the fence. Yes, there are a few dogs that can scale fences. That's a different set of problems. I'll make a different video on that. But most of the time, what you're gonna see is that your problem lies right here on the bottom, okay? And for two reasons. Number one, with the chain link fence, there's just a guide wire that comes down here. And so just every so often, they take heavy gauge wire and secure the chain link to the guide wire. Well, that leaves these big like patches in between the, the, the heavy gauge tie wire where the dogs can grab them with their teeth and pull and carry on, right? And they create holes and then they can get their head through the holes. Uh, now with the, with the wood plank fences, you have posts, usually four by four posts every so often. And the wood plank people don't want this, their plank sitting on the ground because then they absorb moisture and rot, okay? So there's a space here uh, that uh, you know allows air to transfer and stops moisture um, uh, the, the moisture from getting from the ground into the boards. So this is kind of how your problems start. Your dog is on his side of the fence and maybe there's a dog on this side of the fence but like the dog's frustrated. So just imagine so I'm gonna disappear and be the dog. Hey what's going on over there? I, I can smell you. I can hear you. Hello. Hello. Burr, 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 burr. Hello. Anybody over there? And the dog <laughs> They putting their head through here like this, you know, and they're digging, right? Well, you can see, you can see where that would be problematic, right? Because this is what happens. Like, so one dog's on one side of the fence and the other dog is like, hey, what are you doing? And then they start digging or sometimes they're rah, 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 rah. The next thing you know, you've got a big hole under your fence and a head comes out and then a body comes out. And here's where the fence fighting happens. Dogs suffer from what's called boundary uh, anxiety or boundary frustration. So not being able to get over here to the other side of the fence to see their buddy, they start to get, uh, you know, start to get anxious and that anxiety turns to aggression and that's where you get that bar, 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 all that fence fighting, okay? So again, the key to fixing that is making sure that your dog's well socialized and gets lots of exercise during the day, then they're not trying to escape prison. But in the short run, we have to deal with the fact that the dog is able to get under your fence, right? Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna measure our problem areas because it's usually only one or two problem areas in the yard, but if this is your whole yard, uh, this works also just as well. So I'm gonna measure this. I'm gonna say, well, look, I got a six foot section where my dog is really digging under my fence and giving me a hard time. How can I fix that? <sighs> here's the easiest way I've ever seen to fix it. Back up, cameraman, show them what George is holding. Okay, guys, this is what we call around here a cattle panel. Uh, where you where you live, you might call them a you know like a livestock panel. Uh, the technical term is it's a welded wire fence panel. Okay. Now what I like to do with these is I like to use these to repair uh, you know to repair fences uh, around here. I have chain link. The guys with the mowers run into the chain link a lot and tear it up, and so we use this to make temporary repairs. Uh, now so you're going to go and you're going to go to Southern States or whatever kind of farm store you have, and you're going to buy one of these. And I know what you're thinking. 
You're like, Stoney, that seems awful big. It is big. They come in 16-foot sections and 8-foot sections. And, and I know what you're thinking. Well, you're thinking, well, Stoney, I can't get that in my Subaru. Well, luckily, you don't have to, okay, because that's what these are for. And for those of you who don't know what these are, these are what are called bolt cutters. And they're not just for cutting bolts. They'll cut uh, any kind of wire, okay? So <clears throat> I take this wire panel, and I remember that I had measured at home the fa yeah, I need a six-foot section, okay? So I can either cut this in the parking lot of Southern States, okay, or I can cut it into sections that'll fit in the back of a Subaru, right, and pull it home. I just have to make sure that I don't cut any sections smaller than what I need to fix uh, the hole in my fence, right? So easiest thing to do is take your tape measure, and for those of you who are not used to using a tape measure, go ahead and measure out your fence, right, and take you, so you'll notice there's some blue tape on there. That's called painter's tape. So you go, you're at Southern States, and you know the guys at Southern States are always helpful. All the farm stores are always helpful. So you get your blue tape out and you mark your, good. So I've got this marked off in convenient uh, Subaru sized uh, you know, <laughs> panel sections. <laughs> and then you take your bolt cutters and you just go and you trim your panel out. Now, I don't need to cut up this new panel because we keep a lot of these panels around here because we're constantly running into problems with fences uh, or people are down here and they're telling me they have problems with fences so I just send these home with them. Okay. Now, so you've got your little fence panel cut up and you're ready to get started when you get home. You come home and you take your fence panel and here's a, a, a mistake everybody makes. Number one, they do not get these stiff welded wire panels. They get what's called dog wire. If you can bend the panels with your hands, okay, then like that rolled wire, it will not work for securing a backyard. Okay, This kind of wire will work well, but only if used properly. So here's the mistake that I want you to avoid making. If you just take and you cut you a piece of this fence panel and you tack it up to your fence, then what's going to happen is the dogs are still able to come out here and start digging underneath, and like lifting and pulling, right? And this is what'll happen. And they'll end up like digging a hole. And it'll take longer because this does sit on the ground. But I'm gonna show you how to knock all that out. You take and you flip your fence panel over, measure it. Okay, now what I wanna do is I wanna get this piece down on this board so I can tack it in there securely. And I want to have the ability to go underground to stop the digging. This is so neat, guys. You take, can you see where I am, Cameron? I'll lean this up here. <clears throat> Let me see. Uh, yeah, come hold it, Georgie. So George's gonna hold this for me. Okay, just wish, uh, so we can, there you go, hold it just like that. All right, so I'm gonna take my bolt cutters. I'm gonna go down a section and I'm gonna cut this bottom row off. So look, you see what I'm doing here, Cameron? Boom. Boom, boom. Now, what I have left, this is just scrap. You don't need to throw that away. But what I have left is a panel that has built-in stakes. Look how cool that is, right? And so then what I do is I come back over here to my fence section, and you can usually take your foot and drive your panel in the ground. Now, if you live somewhere where the ground's real hard, you can just take a hammer, tap it in, that's usually not necessary though. All right, now, you're usually, right here, you're in pretty good shape, okay? You're in pretty good shape. Now what I wanna do is I wanna leave myself enough space to get some fence staples in there. And you might say, well, Stoney, what in the world is a fence staple? Okay, guys, this is a fence staple. Okay, you can also get these at Harbor Freight. So you need some fence staples and a hammer. Now I'm gonna come, up, come in here, and every couple of feet, 
<laughs> I need a better fence for these dogs. Get back, Rico. Every couple of feet, I'm going to place a fence, a fence staple. All right. Oh, I'm sorry, cameraman. Let me do it from this side so that there's not so much shadow. Okay, now, you'll notice where I'm not going to put a fence panel. Do not try to nail into a knot, guys. That's not going to work very good. So I'll put it over here so it's easier for you to see. So here's my fence staple. I'm going to connect it to the fence. Now, you can leave it like that if you want to, but I generally like to make it look just a little better. So back up, cameraman, and I'll show them how we trim that up. I just come along here. I take my bolt cutters. Come over here and give them a bird's eye view here. Take my bolt cutters. And voila, look at that. That looks pretty nice. Now, what I would recommend doing, you know, like if it's your really your, you know, if it's really your backyard, uh, is you can go ahead and like uh, uh, spray paint your fence panel black, you know, kind of stays out of the way. But look, that's what we do. And you might say, well, Stoney, what if I have chain link fence? I mean, how does, how does that work? Georgie, bring me that small square panel. So guys, if you're dealing with chain link, everything's pretty much the same. I have a panel, and uh, what I'm going to do, <laughs> dog, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut uh, my fence panel so I can make some stakes. And this is what keeps your dogs from being able to dig through or under the fence. That's the big problem, guys, is that the dogs, they get frustrated, and then, like... If this is just laying on the ground, they still get their nose under there and they start digging and they make some progress. So we just flip that like this. So as they start to dig in, they just keep running into these little stakes and uh, they quit digging, right? Okay, so if this was a chain link fence, what you would do is you would come over here. Everything else stays the same. You're gonna mash your panel down into the ground. Get it down in there really deep. Take all the way. If you have super dry soil, again, you can use a hammer. Got to be a little careful with using a hammer because sometimes you'll bend the welded wire uh, stakes. And uh, so, like if it's like if you live in Arizona or somewhere, I guess, uh, go ahead and just soak that area right with the water hose the night before you work on it, and then those uh, stakes will go down in there very easily. All right. So now, here's my problem here. Look. So if I'm just uh, dealing with a section of fence, see, look, see how it'll just come out? So the dogs will start to wedge their heads in here and get underneath. So that's a, that's a problem. So what we do is we come along the bottom of your chain link and you get this is also, this is steel fence wire. You can get this at uh, Southern States also. And you just every so often take and you, let me show them how you do this, cameraman. You're just gonna loop your wire, chain link to fence panels. It doesn't have to be very fancy. Just give yourself about three good turns and then take your Lyman's pliers or fencing pliers if you have them. Okay, and then secure it. And it'll kind of look like that. All right. Here's your big cautionary point right here, guys. You see this? Okay, see these parts? This wire will cut your dog super quickly. So unless you're wanting to go to the emergency vet on a Saturday afternoon, because that's the only time things like this happen, you will deal with these little curly cue pieces. So watch, I'm gonna twist that out there where it's far enough that I can get a nice little turn on it. And then I'm gonna take my fence pliers, cut that off. Right, let me see what I'm dealing with. I cut that off like that. And then I'm gonna use my Leatherman. You guys can use another tool if you want. And I'm gonna turn that into itself. So I make a loop. 
and I turn the little sharp pieces up into the tie. And I take my hand and I rub my hand around it, both hands, like as much as I can, like I'm looking for a sharp piece, right? I shouldn't be able to feel a sharp piece because if this little guy here, if, you know, if there was a, a rabbit or something on the other side, what's he going to be trying to get to the rabbit with? He's going to be trying to get to the rabbit with his nose, right? And his nose is real soft. So I have to be able to rub my hand along that tie, back of my arm, okay, and not feel anything sharp or dangerous. Okay, so guys, listen, uh, I think that's a fair deal. Here's what I've done. So I've shown you an awesome way to secure your backyard fence. And all I'm asking in return is that you take your dogs out and uh, help them live a little bit more interesting life. All right, I'll see you guys next week.